Welcome back. Good to have you here. It's good to be here. It's good to hear you singing, praising God. It's good to be together as a church family again. And praise the Lord for that. Obviously, today is the day we are celebrating the graduation of Lisa and Christine, Caleb, Samuel, and Hannah. The class of 2020, guess what? You are going to have something to tell your kids and grandkids, <laughs> unlike any of us. Why? Because you lived through the COVID-19 virus and the COVID-19 quarantine. Whoever saw this coming? I know you did not plan to finish your senior year of high school from your home, right? Doing your classwork via the computer and Zoom and all that stuff and interacting with your teachers that way. Rather than walking the hallways of your high school the last couple weeks, you've been bouncing off the walls <laughs> of your homes along with your parents and your siblings. <laughs> it's been brutal, hasn't it? It does not look like you're going to take part in the tradition of walking across the platform at the high school gymnasium to receive your diploma. But I have been assured that you will receive your diploma. It's not going to be the way most of us in the past have received it in front of our friends and our family. Undoubtedly, this graduation is not the way you had dreamed of and planned for. And I can assure you it is not the graduation that any of us had dreamed of and planned for. And yet, all is not lost because of what you are living through. Thankfully, you still have your friends, and I know that you're keeping in touch with them through your phone and through your computer. It's good. Lord willing, the day is coming when you can be face-to-face -face again, in person. Thankfully, God is still on his throne, and he is still in control. And for those who love God, rest assured that even during this crazy time, God is working for your good and for his glory. And we know this because of what the Bible teaches us in Romans 8, 28 and 29. We know that in all things, God works for the good of those who love him who have been called according to his purpose. Lean in to Jesus Christ. Lean in to the body of Christ. Not only now, but after you graduate, do not forsake the body of Christ. For the graduates, but for all of us, we would do well to remember in times like this what we read in the book of James. It says, now listen, you who say today or tomorrow, we will go to this or that city, spend a year there, carry on business and make money, while you do not even know what will happen tomorrow. What is your life? You are a mist that appears for a little while and then vanishes. Instead, you ought to say, if it is the Lord's will, we will live and do this and do that. Graduating seniors, friends and family, we have all been taught a lesson these past several weeks. If it is the Lord's will, we will carry on business, we'll go to school, we'll go to work, we'll see our friends, we'll go to the grocery store. I mean, whoever thought going to the grocery store 
would be such a deal? See, if it is the Lord's will, why would God put that in the, in the Bible? Why does he want us to say, if it is the Lord's will, we will do this and do that? He put it in there because he wants to remind us that we are utterly and totally dependent upon him. Nothing is guaranteed in this life. Nothing is guaranteed. If it is the Lord's will, you'll graduate. You'll go off to college. If it is the Lord's will, we'll go back to work, back to school. If it is the Lord's will, we'll meet again. We'll take another breath. This is a reminder for all of us, God is on the throne. And he does not like it when anything or anyone replaces him from being in charge. I want to remind you seniors that are graduating that your life, it's hard to believe at this point, change a lot but your life will change a lot when you go off to college or when you go to boot camp. Trust me, son, it will change. <laughs> you have some changes coming. <laughs> Been there, done that. But your life doesn't have to change all that much either. Please, you're going to be receiving a Bible here in a minute from Pastor Harry. For, for God's sake, for your sake, read it. Let God speak to you. Don't think you know it all. You know a lot. And I would say that most of you know more than I did at your age. Cause... But let God speak to you. Read and study his word. Whatever the future holds for you, take time to pray. Take time to have a conversation with God, and I'm not talking just once a week. I'm talking on a daily basis throughout the day. Pray, converse, talk to, listen to God. Be in relationship with him. When you go off to college, I can't say it strongly enough, stay connected to the body of Christ. Stay plugged in to a church family. Yes, it's going to be different. You're not going to have, for most of you, your friends and family that you've gone to church with for years. They're not going to be there. Be a part of a new church family. Meet new people. Make a new, new friends. You'll find out that God's family is bigger than Faith Alliance Church. It's bigger than any denomination. Plug in, stay plugged in to the body of Christ wherever you go to college. Stay true to your convictions. You thought there was a lot of pressure in high school to go the other way, to do what you shouldn't do. It's going to be amped up at college. It's going to be amped up at boot camp. Stay true to your convictions. Everybody else is not doing whatever they're saying they're doing. And I can guarantee you that there are many who go off to college and when they return, they're coming back with a lot of regrets over what they did. Stay true to your convictions and you won't have to live with those regrets. One final word for the graduating class of 2020. I want you to know that it's okay to grieve, to mourn what you have lost these last few months. You didn't get a senior prom for those of you that wanted to go. You didn't have the post-prom party. Doesn't look like you're going to have the traditional graduation ceremony. 
You didn't get to walk the halls and interact. with your friends and your teachers these last couple weeks of school. I'm telling you, in the coming months and years ahead of you, it is going to be vitally important for you to process the grief, the emotions that you're experiencing. Just getting a piece of paper, a diploma, doesn't mean it's over. We're all going to have to process what we're going through here these last couple weeks. It's okay to grieve. It's okay to mourn what was lost. The best way I know of to encourage you to process your grief, your emotions, is with good, godly friends. Process your grief and emotions by staying true to your convictions. Process your emotions by getting involved in a local church family. Process your emotions by praying, conversing with God. Process your emotions as you read through the scriptures. Don't think you're the only one that suffered loss. As you read through the Psalms especially, you hear David crying out. It's okay to cry out. It's okay to express the hurt and the grief, the frustration, the disappointment. I will say this, I don't think it does any good to keep it in, to try and be the strong one. This isn't bothering me. Mm -hmm. It's bothering all of us. Please know that you have permission to process the grief, the loss that you've experienced. You are to be commended for achieving this milestone in your life of graduating from high school. It is a big deal. We congratulate you. We applaud you. Know that this is but the beginning of life, a new life. It is going to be what you make of it. And I'm asking you, I'm pleading with you, stay connected to the body of Christ. Stay connected to Jesus Christ. Stay connected to the Word of God. Stay true to your convictions. Lean in. Lean in to Jesus Christ. It doesn't have to be a crisis to cry out to Him. I hope we can all have learned through what we have lived through to say, if it is the Lord's will, we'll do this and that, to be dependent upon God. Yeah. We got, you're going to hear a few words from each of our graduating seniors at this time, and Harry's got a little presentation for them. Welcome to uh, an awesome time here with our 2020 seniors. Um, each one of these five seniors are involved in our youth ministry, and it's really exciting that I get to sit down and chill with you guys on Zoom. So thank you, all five of you, for jumping on. Um, everyone can see your names right there, um, but uh, we're going to get a chance to get to know you a little bit. And so I have some questions for us today, and we're going to start on kind of a a lighthearted note, um, I think a lot of people would like to know uh, of your time in our youth ministry, what's one of the greatest memories that you have? It can be serious or funny, um, but what is one of the most fond memories that you have um, being part of the youth ministry? For me, uh, yeah. one of the first times I came to join you guys, because um, if you don't know, I'm from another church, uh, Lisa brought me to an event and um, it was baptisms that you guys were doing on your lawn. Um, and Christiana was one of the people who we came to watch get baptized. And to me, like, I really enjoyed it because there was just like 
a lot of like family people there you could just feel like that family love for each other and it was just a really incredible thing to watch and it was something that I just really enjoyed seeing and when I saw that I thought I want to be a part of this and I was really grateful that you guys were just like so willing to let me in because I'm Nazarene Antioch Alliance now so I think that's pretty cool right on thank you Hannah Somebody else, what's one of your greatest memories? I see a lot of smiles, which I love. You have to go all the way back to 2016. Solid, solid bit back to uh, life in July in Kansas City, Missouri, the better side of Kansas City. And I think I know Francis where this is can going. And speaking. Going to all the purpose of you have to have fully commit to God. And you don't have to wait until. You die and you're facing God and it's look back, I never knew you. That kind of like goes stems back of like kind of how I really started my faith. It goes back to 2016. Way cool. Thank you, Sam. Thank you. Yeah, that was a powerful message. I remember exactly what you're talking about. I was so so impactful, even on my own life. Yeah, right on. Somebody else jump in. So for me, um, I think one of my most fond memories was, I don't know if it was like after a Hayes missions trip or if we just went to Fort Peck, but it was when we were in Fort Peck and we got to go on jet skis and we were spending, uh, I think the girls got to spend a night in a camper and um, we actually ended up going to like this like little place out in the water, like everyone was transported and we could have been stranded, but it was just like a really nice and relaxed time and it was super fun fellowshipping with everyone there and I don't know I think I think that was like right when I was like starting the youth group it was like something that really like I don't know like just exposed me to the people and the personalities and it just kind of showed me that I really wanted to be a part of it like not just because it was like super fun at all but it's just like the people were different like the people really cared about me and my well-being, it seemed like. And, like, before, it was just, I don't know. It was, it was just something new. And I, I really wanted to be a part of it because of that. Right on. Thank you, Lisa. Kayla or Christine, do you got a favorite memory that you want to share? Yeah, I got it. Um, I think my uh, fondest memory is uh, life in Florida, uh, getting to know new people and getting to know all the people in our youth group even better and growing in my faith. Yeah, that, that trip was fantastic. Holy cow. Um, and Hey, we, uh, we get to go back, not you seniors. Sorry, but uh, 2022, we're going back to Orlando life. Uh, yeah, so I'll make sure I'll take a ton of pictures and, uh, who knows, maybe you end up coming back to Sydney and you're a youth leader and maybe you can come along. Who knows? We don't know. Uh, but yeah, yeah. What an amazing trip for sure. And right now a little shout out, right? Life replay, life replay going on right now. So it's fun to be interacting with that. Christine, share with us your great memory. Thank you. Um, my favorite memory comes from life. Uh, the first time I went in 2016, just the ride down there itself. I don't think I'll ever forget those painful, torturous, hilarious 18 hours stuck on a bus, but just finally getting to go to the actual conference and seeing that many people in like the one area at once was just like, whoa. It was pretty crazy. And just to see everyone just be that excited and running over each other to get in, it was it was crazy. <laughs> yeah, there is uh uh something something else about the the excitement that people have. They almost forget that people are around them. Uh that happened at the la last life conference. I had to like hold a ton of people back. Do you remember that? It's people like just start charging. Oh my goodness. Yeah. Craziness. And then uh, your youth pastor got onto the video and, and, uh, didn't mean to, uh, but was, uh, like pushed through the door first one there. So, 
uh, yeah, the craziness of the excitement. Uh, so much fun to see so many youth excited about the same thing, about following Christ and learning. Uh, so thank you. Thank you all. By the way, if anyone's wondering, the person down below, Tesha, right down there, you can wave. Yeah, there it is. So that's my wife. She's my partner in crime. All these youth have gotten to know her quite a bit as well. Um, and I guess I should introduce myself a little bit. My name is Harry Ozarek. I'm the assistant pastor at Faith Alliance Church and oversee all of the youth ministries and uh, has been the pleasure. Uh, it's been my pleasure to, to be able to impact these five youth's lives as much as I can, as much as I could, and uh, to watch them grow, to watch them make decisions, to watch them learn, um, to watch them press into God has been, has been amazing. And with that note, segueing into our next question, um, I would really like to know, honestly, and I'm sure others would like to know, how have you grown and or what have, what have you learned in your time here um, at Common Ground Youth Ministry? I guess I'll start. Um, I just think over like all the trips and stuff that we've done, I've learned to be a lot more flexible and like <laughs> Samuel's disagreeing, but I just, okay. Well, I just think, cause like nothing ever really like, I mean, you have the plan, but it's loosely. So I guess kind of just learning how to just go with the flow more and see where something can take you, I guess. Samuel probably doesn't agree, but you know, it's fine. <laughs> uh, thank you, Christine. I appreciate that. Sam, why don't you go next? I'll go next, I guess. Uh, <laughs> back to everything has a purpose. God created you with a plan, with a purpose. It goes into even if you like have a plan with how it almost never goes to our plan, but there's always a purpose behind it. Yeah, right on. Right on. You were made on purpose with a purpose. So powerful. Yeah, I'm glad that you shared that one. That was, I think that hit a lot of youth, especially at this last life conference. Um, so real, so true. Uh, Lisa, I see you unmuted your mic. So I think you might have something for us. So go for it. So uh, one way I've grown a lot just in this ministry is just with people and friendships and just like the body of Christ. I'm an only child. I'm still awkward a lot at times, but I'm very shy and people who I've been meeting in this last year don't believe me when I tell them that I'm shy. And I think a lot of that is just because of this youth group and of the Faith Alliance family just, you know, inviting me in and making me a part of them and just the friendships I've formed and just everything our youth leaders have done and everything that teens have done with each other just to pour into each other, to pray for each other, to love each other, and just do life together has been really beneficial. And it's really helped me grow um, to feel less awkward around people and to slowly become more like a people person where I'm comfortable to reach out um, to talk to people about anything. And so that's something very valuable to me. Right on. Thank you, Hannah. Appreciate that a lot. Uh, we love you a ton. It's so, so much fun to see you grow in that. I'm glad that we can be there for you and see that happen. Yeah. Uh, Caleb or Lisa? I remember. All right, do it. <laughs> I think um, one of the things that I've learned is that like the power of God, I guess, and it's kind of an interesting thing to say, because like, oh, yeah, God is eternal. He had, He's all powerful. And you get that. But like now I, I, I get it. It's it's so crazy how everything he made is like how complicated things are, or like how sensitive things are and how perfect things are like. I'm so glad that I was able to grow up in mm -hmm. Sydney, Montana, where I could like appreciate nature, because honestly, my connection to nature is one of the things that like prove that for me God is real and maybe if I grew up in a city I really wouldn't have had that strong realization to that bound me to my faith 
but like with him like knowing his power and knowing that he is bigger than any problem that I have is something that I learned throughout the years yeah so true so true there's nothing that we can't give him that he can't handle that he can't help us with and love us through so thank you Lisa Caleb lay it down man all right um one of the big things that I've learned um is pretty close to what Sam said um what Pastor Paul says in almost every one of his sermons is that you're created uh on purpose for a purpose that's um that's something I think about a lot and it's really helped me out through the years mm. right on right on yeah you yeah, you're not an accident, right? You're you're uniquely made for a unique purpose. There's nothing, there's no mistake in there of who you are and what you were created to be. So yeah, thank you, Caleb. Uh, I might I'm gonna put my wife on the spot here and just for just a second, Tesha, do you have any favorite memory or thing that you've learned working with our youth? Hmm. I mean, memory wise, well, everything at the life trips, but I have to say yuck kickball has been pretty awesome. Just watching you guys kind of get destroyed with wild and out. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, but no, it's just, it's been, um, this group of seniors and just youth in general have been really, have had a lot of servant hearts and just really wanting to, um, help the community and, and different events. And it's just, it's just been a joy to be able to watch you guys and your hearts for ministry and um, growing with God in that way has just been cool to see. Right on. Thank you for sharing that. I definitely did put her on the spot for that. So uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Um, so with that, let's move to our last question, um, which is what advice do you have for the youth coming after you? I think it's really easy to get caught up in all the things going on in your own life. And one of the most important things of any of our lives is learning, growing, but then passing that on to the next generation. Um, and if we don't raise up the next generation, there's no one coming after us that's going to be doing the same work and reaching their next generation. And and you guys have heard me say that to you so many times, probably sick of it, but you guys have such an amazing opportunity with this next generation. And I would love for that next generation to hear from you right now. So what advice do you have for the next generation? I mean, I'll, I guess I'll go first. One of the things that I would definitely say for this next generation is you're growing up, you're going to be going through a lot of changes, middle school, high school, sometimes the worst time in people's lives, sometimes the best time in people's lives, but there's just a lot of stuff that people get caught up into, and it's always really hard for people to remember, for me, that I notice is that people forget that God is bigger than anything on earth, like, a lot of I feel like high school and middle school can bring a lot of temptations like may, maybe not bad at first but it's I just know that it really tests your faith and you really need to stick true to God in order to be successful with your faith you're with your faith and I think it's good to for younger um Christians to understand that they need to make their faith their own instead of relying on their parents' faith. And the earlier they can do it, the better off they are through middle school and high school. So maybe they're trying to discipline themselves to not do this or not do that. And instead of having to make their parents kind of be their um, guard. Right on, Lisa. Thank you. Somebody else with uh, something that you'd like to contribute for I can marry, I'll do it. advice. Yeah, it hit me. <laughs> All right. Um, I think uh, the advice that I would give the the youth that are coming up is that um, I just go all in. You know, I uh, 
pour everything you got into this and it'll it'll really change your life for the better i can go um something that's been really important to me is that we're called to walk by faith mm -hmm. and not by sight and so when you are going to youth group going to different events with that if you feel hesitant to it it's something that you may not want to do uh, maybe it scares you like social interaction it might be difficult and it gives you some anxiety or something like that I just want to remind you that God doesn't give us a spirit of fear but he gives us a spirit of power and of love and of good judgment so if you feel like it's scaring you and God doesn't bring that to you go and walk in that faith even though you can't see what it's going to be like because when I decided to take that leap uh, Faith Alliance really changed a lot for me and it was so good. And so I just want to encourage you to do that. And then one other thing I'd like to say is don't be afraid to lead. If you feel like you know the answer to a question Harry asks, or if you feel like you can contribute in any way, go for it. And also remember that leadership within the church isn't just a pastor. It isn't just the youth leader, the worship leader. It isn't just um, anybody up front service and leadership can happen in so many different ways and it's really a beautiful thing when you can see other kids your age around you just stepping up even in like the smallest way to take care of someone or to do something little and just to lead in that is really great and it'll bring people closer together and then like my final thing is prayer is so important and it's so powerful and god is faithful and just and he will honor the prayer of a righteous person and so I just ask you guys to really lean into each other and get to know each other by leaning into God and following uh, what he puts on your heart and like places you like where you feel like you want to do and just really pray with one another because that's going to unite you as brothers and sisters in Christ. And it's something that I hope you have for a lifetime. So don't let fear hold you back from that when God is trying to give you such an incredible gift. Right on. Thank you, Hannah. Thank you wise words who's next well caleb kind of got to it before i did but kind of trying to keep it simple commit mm. that's what it really takes you have to put all that you have into it and i think that's what's what god wants he wants you to take all of your past all the things you've done in your past and bring it to your future and not let it hold you back so even it simple commit Right on, right on. And Christine, last but not least, lay it on us. Okay, um, I guess I would say try to remember to have a good attitude most of the time because like when we do stuff or whatever, uh, or go on the trips, there's gonna be parts where you like, you get sick of everyone and just want to, you know. But you, you just gotta remember that everyone's feeling the same way. And so just try to have a good attitude and things will go a lot smoother for everyone. And that's just not on trips or anything. That's just all the time. Just don't be terrible. <laughs> <laughs> that's how Christine needs. Don't be terrible. Hey, I love that advice. I think we can all take that advice. Don't be terrible. Uh, and the way to not be terrible is to lean into God, love as he loves. Right, Christine? Yep. <laughs> yep. Good. Right. Hey, you guys are awesome. Seriously, you, uh, you guys, all, all five of you have brought me so much joy. It's been, it's been awesome. We've all, I think, all five of us at different times have had some highs and some lows, learned a lot of different things, and uh, I'm so excited for you five to go off and do amazing things in college. And so, thank you for this time. And uh, we'll be praying for you. And uh, yeah, thank you for jumping on and doing this with us. And uh, we'll catch you later. Yeah. All right, seniors. Come on up. Come up, seniors. Do you have to come up? Yes. Let's go right there. Right there. Right there. Right there. Maintain your social distancing, quick. All right. Every year, every year, every year, 
I always got something a little special for them. And if we're being honest, sometimes Bibles don't look so exciting. Can we be honest? <clears throat> However, I want you guys to know that alongside with what I was saying up there, being in your word is right next to it. If you're not in your word, you're not being filled. If you're not reading and learning and getting to know your God better, that relationship is going to suffer. It's not studying. It's not school. It's not just a bunch of words on a page. It is life. Life. And if we remove ourselves from that life source, we will not have life. We will be dry. And I don't want that for you guys. These are special Bibles because they're meant to help you study the Bible. It's craziness. But there's a method in there called SOAP. Paul Turek, our senior pastor, has talked about this a few times. All right, SOAP, you ready? Scripture, observation, application. That's a very important piece, by the way. You've heard me talk about that a bunch, application and prayer. That's also very important. Okay? I think a lot of us, if we're being honest, we hit the Scripture, we get to the observation a little bit, and then we're like, oh, that was a cool thing, and go on with their day. All right, if we don't apply what we learn, what's the point? And if we aren't covering it in prayer, what's the point? God doesn't want you to stop at knowing good things. He wants you to do those things and have him be a part of it, in it, through it, doing it with you. Yeah? So hold those, cherish those. Those will, if you pour into them, be the most exciting thing we have given you ever. Those baskets that I uh, make up with Tesha, they're coming, all right? So, uh, But with that, uh, parents, if you're here, come on up to your, to your child. You're still children, by the way. I hate to break that to you, and that's okay. Children are actually lifted on high in the Bible and highly respected by Jesus. So children is a word that I use with much endearment and love. So normally the real pastor would pray at this point. Um, for those of you that know me, that's a joke, all right? I'm, I'm being funny. Um, but Paul Turek is sending off his, his last youngin, and so we're going to let him stay with Christine. I would ask that if you feel comfortable to extend a hand, you can do it mentally. But right now, let's cover them in prayer, shall we? Let's pray. God, I thank you for such an awesome opportunity to come alongside, to love, to care for your creation. Lord, I, I truly deeply ask that you would walk with them, and even more, that they would walk with you. Lord, that they would resist temptation, not on their own strength, but by your strength and the strength of the body. And to that end, Lord, I pray that they press in to the body of Christ. Lord, that they wouldn't give in to isolation. They wouldn't give in to the world's recommendation of don't show your pain, don't show your issues. It's better to keep it hidden. And I pray that they would listen to your truth, be transparent and honest with themselves, with you, and with others. That they would truly carry each other's burdens and that they'd live a life honoring to you as Sam shared that they would run the race, and at the end, you wouldn't say, depart from me, I never knew you, but instead, come and join in the Father's table, good and faithful servant. You have run the race well. Lord, this is a launching point for them to go do this, to make their choices, 
to accept those consequences and still call out your name, good and bad. Lord, you want to be in it. You want to be with them at their lows and their highs. I pray that they would always, always ask for you to be in their lives and to be the driver, the conductor, surrendering and declaring you their king. I pray that we as a church, God, would lift them up, that we would be praying, committing to praying for them. This is not the end, but only the beginning. And we thank you for how you love us, you care for us, and all that you've done in their lives to this point, and all that you are going to do. It's in your name we pray. Amen. Amen. We love you all. Please love on them. Stick around. Talk with one another. Uh, you guys can hang outside. It's really nice outside. So if you want to go out there because you're worried about social distancing, that's a great place to be. Otherwise, you can chill in here. Thank you for being here. We will see you next week. Sound good? 930 next week. All right. Have a great Sunday.